Johnny Bra. Well, I haven't been around for some while, as you can probably imagine. Well, I haven't uploaded anything. Anyway, I have some exciting news. Now, if you're already a subscriber, well, you probably already are aware that I haven't uploaded anything for several months. For which I do apologise. So, I plan to make up for it. That I do. Now, the reason is, well, I've been busy on another channel. And I've been stuck on a Caribbean island. Ginger Island. But that's another story. So, so since you're here, I want to share with you my plans for this channel. Firstly, I don't want it to just be about woodworking. No, not just be about woodworking. It's going to be about making stuff. Anything, in fact. If it means using these, that's what I want to do. So, now, as you're probably aware, I am somebody who likes to make things out of wood. But I also like to make things out of metal. So, the channel itself is going to be taking a new direction. And it's going to um, move towards making pretty much anything. It's going to be more of a, a making channel. It quite frankly opens up huge possibilities for the channel. It doesn't have to be just out of wood. It's like to be metal, cloth, earth, you know, pretty much anything. So it's going to be quite exciting really and it's going to open up my mind and hopefully yours as well. And what I'm going to be doing is a series of videos. Some will be live, and some will be recorded videos um, of all sorts of stuff, including upcycling, eco projects. Presented by me, and, well, relatively high definition videos. Well, and these live cast videos as well, because this one's live. And safe to the gallery, that it is. Projects, tutorials, tips and tricks, that's what I hope to do. Or a hack or two, if you like. Products and tool reviews. All to do with, you know, making stuff. That's my plan. I hope it'll be okay. This is just a new direction for the channel. But as the actual workshop, if you've been there before, is actually, you know, it's powered by solar. It used to be a bit of wind as well, but um, we had a bit of an accident with that. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the wind turbine is, we've still got it, but it needs new blades. Yes. Mm. But that's another story. So, in the past, you know, creative trades have dominated, weren't they, by men. But now it's, it's, it's opened up, isn't it? It's like you've got ladies taking up the profession as well. On building sites, it's not just in the home workshops, which I think is absolutely bring, brilliant. Just bring it on. And hopefully I'll be able to attract um, women to the channel as well, you know, encourage them to have, have a go. You know, you don't have to be frightened of the tools or the machines. No. The same from some guys, not be funny, the same machines I'm wary of. Can they cut, flip the fingers off? Not a great idea. Keep well away from the blades, as you already know. So the major difference would be is that I want to bring you along for the ride. I want to actually be able to engage with those on the channel, whether it be via the chat uh, or in the comments on the actual videos themselves. So I will be reading the comments. That's kind of my promise. And that's my promise that I make on my other channel as well, because I, I want to be able to engage with you. I want you to be able to engage with me and help mould the channel in a particular direction. And you don't have to have loads of tools to do, you know, this stuff. It just makes it a bit easier. You know, and quite frankly, I quite often use just hand tools. Some of these are ancient, I had them for years. And some of them I've inherited, some of them I bought. You know, um, and my profession was, well, still is, woodworking. I've been there for several years, decades, in fact. Since 1989. They were the days. I was a lot younger then. <laughs> So, basically what I'm saying is I'd like the channel to be moulded by those watching the channel, engaging with the channel, and I'll engage with you. And um, if you have a particular request, maybe it's something you'd like to know how to, to do, a technique, or something you'd like to make. If you leave it in the comments or the chat, well then I'll make note of it, and maybe make a video based on that. 
So hopefully we can put the channel on a direction that not just satisfies my own ego to make things and stuff and act like a fool, but to um, provide something that's useful to those who are watching the channel. So, any requests, please leave it in the comments down below. So, I reckon we need to do a little bit of a workshop tour. Hmm. Blimey. So you think we do these live things, the ideas don't pop in my head just like that. I have to think. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> That's really hard for me. But anyway, hey, let's have a look, see what's, what we've got here. And this is a, quite a modest uh, workshop. So I'm just going to put you on here so I can carry you about. And um, yes, yeah, so there's quite a few tools in here. But nothing's really that expensive. And also, it's stuff I have collected for a long period of time, so no one's going to have, you know, if you're just starting, you know where you're going to have lots and lots of gear, a staff. But it's quite nice collecting things, yeah, as you can see by the little tool cabinet here, and, that is, and I pretty much use everything that's in there. I do, honest, and you'll see, if you watch this channel. And if you're new here, please click like and subscribe, and maybe that little bell icon, because then you get one first thing in your pocket every time I upload another video. Oh, who we got here? Do, 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 do. Hello, Mad Monk. How you diddling? Oh, we're looking forward to the wisdom. Oh. Well, there's hardly anyone watching at the moment. But um, I'm really glad you're here. But it's just kind of trying to get an intro onto this channel because um, it's been laying dormant for such a long time. And uh, I feel a bit guilty about it, actually, because I've got a few subscribers on here. And I haven't uploaded anything for quite a while. So um, that's pretty much why my workshop is sort of reasonably tidy, otherwise it wouldn't be. <laughs> oh, getting a bit glare there from those lights. So, what we got in this shop, right, got some basic tools that every shop ideally should have, such as a table saw, but it's not imperative, you can use a skill saw and do pretty much everything you can do with this, just with a small skill saw, such as one of these. So they don't have to be, you know, I tend to use a lot of jigs. Now, if you're on Ginger Island, you probably see I, I tend to make jigs for, you know, re relatively basic tools. All we had was a skill saw down there when I was there with uh, Graham Hoos. And um, so I, I tend to make jigs. And jigs just make life a lot, lot easier, such as this one here for cross cutting, just using that skill saw. I'll just show you a little circle saw. And I've got another, another one here, which is great for cutting the end off a shutter or a door. So you don't have to have big machines. You, you can do a lot of stuff just with basic stuff. You know, machine, machines just make it easier and make you more lazy, <laughs> to be honest. But in here, let's say, what we've got in here, we've got the... Um, let's, oh, no, let me show you what we've got first. That's a good idea. Right, we've got the skill saw. Not skill saw, the table saw. <laughs> and this is a Jet 10-inch super saw. It's quite old, um, and it's got a couple of problems with it, but I've, I get, I've got around that. Um, but it's got a cast iron top, which is a very, very heavy saw. Which is, but having a cast iron top, it's flat. It's perfectly flat. Absolutely brilliant. And that's my outfeed table, which is just made of chipboard and bits of wood and what have you. So it's just a table that allows, the, obviously, the wood to run off this table saw onto the outfeed. And then there's a variety of cupboards everywhere for storage, just to tidy things up. And then over here, we have my thicknesser. And there's an old Multico thicknesser, for which I've fitted a digital thickness gauge. So that, that, that the basic one's on. It tells me how much material I'll be removing when I run the piece of timber through. So it goes through here like a rough bit of timber and comes out the other side, all smooth and to a certain thickness. That's the idea of that. And over here we have a medium size, like 12 inch uh, bandsaw, an electric Beckham. Quite a good little saw, it's not too bad. I wish it had the cast iron top, but it's aluminium. But I don't, I'm not a big user of bandsaws. They're very, very useful when you actually, well, you want to cut anything that's a bit of a curve in it. But I still, this is probably my most used tool. And along with that would be this DeWalt radio lap. It's a radio lap saw. So basically, what you, you put your bit of wood across here like so. And you pull this across while the blade is running. And it will cut through your piece of wood. But this is set perfectly at 90 degrees. And knowing me, yet again, I will use a jig. Now this particular saw can do 45s, but as soon as you um, change from 90 to 45, you're potentially 
Because we run it out of true. So instead of doing that, I leave it at 90 all the time, so I hardly got to set it up, and then I make jigs. So here's another jig. Now this one does my 45s. Great when you do picture framing. And then what I use then, if I am doing framing, I use this guillotine here. So this is something you don't want to put your fingers in, you chop them off. So those blades come across there, and they can do a perfect 45. And th this thing is brilliant. Really, 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 really useful. A little palm router. Now, if it was then ginger iron, this is the sort of router that I wanted to be able to find. I couldn't find one down there to do the signs because it's 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 powerful, yet it's nice and easy to use to write with, to do the signs with. Works really well. Other than that, I'll be using things like this Makita or, or the other routers or my router table here. So the right other machines, I've got you know usual power tools, little power tools. And then this is where I put all my battery drills. They're not all in there at the moment. They're actually upstairs. <laughs> what was going to be our studio? And another bandsaw. Very useful tool. This old DeWalt one used to be my father's, this one did. So um, I've got to trip over my tripod. Oh, ah, as you do. My clamp wall. Now these aren't all my clamps. <laughs> If I told you I've got nearing on 500 clamps in total, most of my small F clamps, um, like these, like these clamps here, um, but I've got quite, quite a few clamps. The reason for that is I do a lot of laminating. You need a lot of clamps when you're gluing lots of bits of wood together. So, yeah, like, like, like plywood. So, yeah, it's um, very, 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 very useful to have clamps. You can never ha have too many clamps. And over here we've got my lathe. There's an old uh, Chapak lathe. I do actually use this quite a reasonable, yeah, quite a lot. I haven't used it since it's been back from Junior Island and it's starting to get buried with stuff. So um, it's actually a really lovely thing to use. This is. It's quite a quiet lathe as well. It's very good. There's a variety of different chisels over there, high speed steel chisels. Um, and then we've got my tool cabinet, which is made on the cheap because it's made out of flooring grade chipboard. Hence, that's what it is. That's, that's just flooring grade chipboard. But it works, you know. And um, you've got your drawers on the bottom, my hand planes, my chisels, your carving chisels, and it all shuts away nicely. Like so. So, it's, yeah, it just keeps everything clean and tidy. Something's jamming up in there, I know. What the hell was it that? Might be that. Something, let that shut. Oh, there you go. That's not when that's shutting. For some reason, that's not shutting. Something jamming up there. Hey oh. Something trapped in the door. It's probably something that's in there. In there. So, yeah, it's very, very handy. But you don't have to have all this stuff to make a food project that you don't. It was simple stuff. And that's what I hope to show in, these, in the videos I'm going to be making here. Not everything's going to be using, you know, uh, machinery. And this is, a mod, this is a relatively modest workshop, to be honest. You get some people's workshops, they're amazing. You know, this has been all been done pretty much on the sheep. Hello, Duke. How you doing, buddy? Hey, yeah, see? Steve C. Oh, cheers, buddy. Um, so, yeah, it's just it's a bit of a mixture. There's a bit of a mixture of tools. There's quite a variety because I've got my scroll saw, which I do actually use quite a lot, like a fret saw. This one down here, which is a lo lovely thing. It's American, um, American Craftsman. Also, love this sort of, it's quite old, so it um, has only a variety of uh, features on it. But I've added things like a foot pedal, like that, even though it's not even blade wood done up. <laughs> so I've added the foot pedal. And that makes a huge difference, because at least it um, allows you to uh, work away from the wood without sort of like constantly having to stop and start and fumbling for the, for the power switch. It just makes it safer as well. It only, only works when you've got your foot on the pedal. And then through here, oh, going to the dungeon. Right, so the workshop is split into, I've got three main workshops. I've got this one, that one, um, it's sort of no man's land through that side, which then leads to the house. Um, and then in here, like I say in here, this is where I generally, oh, God, it's dark. Put the light on, it's a bit dark in here. I'm not coming out like, oh dear. And this is where I generally process some of my timber on that bench. But then I take the weighing off with it, weighing edge off, which is the wavy edge. So, for instance, you've got a trunk, you know, 
big lump of wood and it's been cut into slabs and you've got the weighing edge on. So you've got literally still got the bark on the tree. You know, a bit like, like that's got on there. So it's sort of a wavy edge to the edge of a bit of wood. Well, you want to remove that before you can run it through the table saw so you can create a straight piece of wood at a certain thickness. So I've, I've I made this. Now I actually made this years and years ago, literally on a couple of trestles, using it outside on a couple of trestles. And this is the third saw I bought for it. Now this is a, a Makita now, the other ones were cheap saws. And I got this Makita um, 10 inch, sorry, nine and a half inch um, skill saw. And literally it runs on this slide, it's like a carriage arrangement I've made with dust extraction. <laughs> it's all wood. <laughs> and it rips the rain edge off and it works so well I didn't bother changing it. So it was kind of supposed to be a prototype type, but it's not. It's wall clamps over there, various other stuff. We've got, it's going to be quite interesting thing to use is this here. This here is a jig for doing dovetails. So like, um, and box joints on boxes and I mean, dovetails in general. Uh, ideal for doing stopped dovetails on drawers and what have you. So it just makes it a lot, lot easier. But if I've only got one or two dovetails to cut, I'll just cut my hand. You might as well. Um, metal cutting saw, chop saw, that I use a lot. This is my linisher. I actually use this when I'm doing my grinding and my, my planes for primary grind. And then I take them to be polished up on the on the oil stones. And I've got, of course, a mess over there. Don't look over there. No, 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 don't, 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 don't do it. It's a mess. Blimey. Welder, welder. So I've got a MIG welder and a um, inverter welder. Another little chop saw, one of you take on site, if I do site work. Another sharpener, various other stuff. Anyway, it's, it's ended up being a dumping ground because I ain't been here. Now, the, now my hoover, well, my vacuum's not actually in the workshop. No, it's here. Oh, how does that work? And I wonder, you ask. I know you didn't, but I just said that anyway. So here we go. <laughs> so that is my, my vac vacuum. It goes through the wall, underneath these steps here into the main workshop. Let's see where it goes now. Let's get this, this hole. There's another compressor up there. <coughs> Sorry, a bit quick there. Oh, let's get back in this one. It's warmer in here, because I've got my wood burner going. Wood burner? In a workshop? All that wood? Oh my God, no. What bad idea was that? Anyway, I did have a wood burner in here that was, well, one we bought, and it was an Ardings Turbo 5, or something it's called. And um, it rotted away. So I made one. Wait for it. <laughs> that is my wood burner that I made out of, um, using those welders you saw through there. I made that wood burner out of old wheels. As you can see, they're wheels. And the bottom section is the bottom of a gas bottle I cut open. Obviously, I made sure there's no gas in it. I filled it with water and all that sort of thing. All the usual stuff so you don't blow yourself up. It's usually a good idea. Don't blow yourself up. And then um, the top here, the lid, is actually the original lid from the old wood burn, which has got split and has to weld it all up, which is a bit of a bind because it's um, cast. And as you see, well, you did giveaway now, you can see that it's a wheel now, can't you? They're, they're like little holes in the wheels. And a random change or something. Just, you know, it's, it's there for a purpose, obviously, not to make it look more sort of steampunk. <laughs> but it's actually a sawdust burner. So you can actually burn sawdust on this, on this wood burner. It's quite clever. I only copied the other design. It wasn't my design. But how it works is, this thing here, that is how you get air into the wood burner from the top. But that doesn't just add air into the top of the wood burner. That tube, at the moment it's actually got logs in it, but um, that tube goes, I don't know if you can my phone not falling in there, goes halfway in. So if you imagine that being full of sawdust, and what that'll do, it'll actually burn the sawdust from the centre. So it works really, really well. And I'm very pleased how it's turned out, actually, um, because it works. And it's usually good, it works better than the old one. And you've got the, uh, you've got another vent at the bottom. That's a little snout at the bottom, if you ever look. That thing there, that's the vent for the bottom. And then you've got the door on the bottom as well, so you can get your ash out. So it works. Then you've got these round. <laughs> that's just to disperse the heat. That's what that's for. Yeah, obviously. I didn't lose the plot, honestly. But obviously, I did. So, this is my bench. Now, this bench here has, has had a few incarnations. And this, I suppose, this is like the third incarnation of this exact same bench. The leg, <coughs> the, um, the leg set and everything remained the same. I just added bits to it over the years. And 
originally this floor was a muck floor in here with that bench in it and then I put the wooden floor to it so now the bench is actually lower than it used to be but then I added some more wood on the top so th this was a replacement top on here the original top was pine um, and that was all very well but the problem is it was hard to keep it flat so this one's double boarded so it's about oh god 44 mil thick it's only chipboard but full grade chipboard but it's double thickness so it's um it's quite a bit of you know you can bang on it no problems at all and all I do every so often it's been on there now for about three years this top and all I do is just run the sander over it occasionally or dust mask up and um, just flatten it all off get a lot of lumps of glue off it and stuff but it is pretty true from end to end and side to side and corner to corner which is so flipping useful to have a flat bench it's a massive difference because you can base your projects on it now regarding the actual hoover I did mention the vacuum didn't I the aspirator en français but I forgot to carry on Ah, let's first just check what you, if anyone's saying anything. Steampunk, that certainly is, Steve. Yeah, I know, APM Gold. What an idiot. <laughs> but never mind. <laughs> if anyone if you didn't realise, I, I, I was going to do this. I was doing, so I attempted to do this video earlier today. And like an idiot, I forgot to change the channel. I, I put it onto my All Shorts channel. <laughs> and I didn't realise. So I've just been blabbering on about the workshop and stuff like that and, and what I hope to achieve from the channel. And, um, yeah, I was on the wrong channel. I felt that small. Yeah. <laughs> that was a laugh in the end, anyway. But, yeah, so that vacuum, it ends up here eventually. But before it does, it has this. This is, this is my, um, it's my attempt of a Dyson. So this device here, right, this container, basically ca captures all the dust before it gets anywhere near the filters through the, through the other room there, into the actual vacuum itself. So the vacuum it hardly ever needs emptying. Occasionally you might have to clean the filter um, to get a bit of the fine, fine dust might get through, but most of it ends up in here. And how it does that is that. I've got a vortex. Now, the, my first vortex I made, I made out of a road cone that I stole. Yeah, a stolen road cone. Upside down, I made it. And that did work quite well, but eventually it kind of got sucked in and collapsed, and it was brittle as well. So I bought, I bought one in the end. So was, they, they used to be really expensive, like dust deputies and stuff like that. But this was like 12 quid, so I bought point to try and make one, get one for 12 quid. So anyway, that's all it does. It, basically, the suction is on the end of that hose, comes and it goes in there, spins around really, really, really fast. And then eventually the heavies go into here. And then the cleaner here then goes back down into the hoover. And these are saying it saves so much time because you're not constantly emptying the hoover and all you've got to worry about is that. And that can then go in there over the winter, which is really, really handy. So wood shavings and um, what have you, wood shavings, shavings, wood shavings are, are one of the problems with garden, obviously working with wood. You've got to get rid of the stuff. For me, it's not a any problem because we either compost it in the garden, um, you know, in the composters, because we, yeah, we do our veggie plot and what have you, and um, I say veggie plot, <laughs> veggie plot on steroids, yeah. Although we didn't do that well with that this year, I was so busy with the other channel, I didn't work hard enough in the garden, so it, I had a lot of problems. And plus, I went away for a bit, as you know, not prison. Well, it was kind of like prison. <laughs> don't, don't, tell, don't tell Graham. <laughs> it did feel like prison us sometimes. So anyway, that, that's the vacuum. But isn't the only thing you've got to have sucky devices in here? No, saucy, eh? Ooh. Nope, we have our chip extraction system, which is basically, well, I say basically, it's through here in this space, which I call my no man's land. Well, our garage. And my motorbike. And my lawnmower. And my dust extractor over there. So that's the extractor. As you can see, it's, it's all droopy at the moment because it's got no power going through it. And that then goes to the pipe system, into the workshop, and goes to the um, to the table saw, and currently the uh, planer, planer thickness, and my surface planer. And there's the compressor that is um, running the airlines in the actual workshop as well. Now this base here, we actually got some plans here because we'll start putting this floor. Up the top here, da -dum 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 -dum. and that is going to be my studio eventually. And that is <laughs> that's quite a big space because this is one part of it, it goes right over the top of that workshop and it goes right over the top of the other workshop. 
So it's going to be one massive floor area above there eventually. I just ran out of money. <laughs> Hence, I haven't done the joists over here yet. So I've got about another four or five joists to put in. Top there. So um, as you see, it's a big gap. So there's going to be stairs at the far end leading up to that floor, but also there's going to be access from the main house um, at the top of the stairs of the main house, which we get access from up there as well. And that's just literally just going to be a big floor up there. It's going to be a big studio space. That's the idea. And while I was away, my battery died on my motorbike. Uh, uh, that, uh, that was not helpful. Especially when I wanted to go on it. That's a beast, that. It's just 1400. It's like, it's like in the car engine on your, on your motorbike. <laughs> 1400 cc. It's nuts. Went to Italy on that. Twice. And Switzerland. And obviously around France. All over the place. It was good fun. Bloody dangerous though. So, okay, where was I? Done that. So dust extraction comes in. You can see there's ported up there. They're only plastic pipes. But what I've actually done is, because you get static. You might not realise, but the, with um, PVC, you get a lot, lot of static. When this is running, you get the dust. It's like jumps around all the static. Well, you have to get rid of that static because there have been some cases of dust, like, that, like the actual dust igniting with the stat. It's very rare, but there has been cases of it actually igniting. I thought there was a little bullshit at first, but I did, I've, I've actually watched some cases of it and, actually, and some test examples, test scenarios. And, unless they're pulling, you know, trying to fool me, they might be. But it actually blow up because there's just fine dust in the air, it ignites, apparently. So, um, anyway, in those pipes, there's a wire which originally came out of the gain. The gain is like a conduit pipe, and you get like a draw wire in the, in the plastic conduit for your cables. So, I take that out and I've run it through that along the sides inside the pipe all the way through. So that acts as like an earth, so it takes the static through the static. It's good anyway, because you doesn't you don't have all this static problem. It, the problem where you get static problem isn't just obviously whether or not it's gonna set the, the workshop alight. It, it it makes you jump. <laughs> you know we get on a shopping trolley, all of a sudden, oh my giddy aunt, like that. Well, same in here if you don't have any kind of earthing. Now this workshop is pretty much powered by solar. Pretty much. Um and the solar comes up for this cave, this, this conduit. I've got this, this all going in a box when I get a chance. Uh, it comes up to here where it says solar. Um, and then from that, then it runs to the uh, battery system and uh, the inverters. So, and yeah, so it's pretty good. It managed to run as a saw. Yeah, the saw's not so bad actually. It's, it's only about 1800 watts. So it's actually got to the induction motors. So they're quite good. So anyway, let's go back to the other stuff over here. My selection of blades. Ooh. Ooh, yeah. Oh, that's sexy. No? Okay. And other jigs, push sticks, and all. Um, I just love things that make things easier. Do you know what I mean? It's just anything that I can make that makes the job that little bit smoother, less problematic. It's got to be a bonus, isn't it? It really has. Other things that I tend to use um, over here, we've got my pyrography. You know, like uh, wood burning. There's the, the end. There's a problem there. That's really, really, really good. Um, like, so I've got my guillotine. Oh, routers, 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 routers everywhere. Router bits, collections, you know, various other stuff to do with routers. And different cutters. Another set of cutters here. Window set to windows. So it's all useful stuff. And everything's on wheels. I got out of action. That was in the, in the other day in action, wasn't I? So, um, and one machine I think I would most definitely, definitely buy again if it broke tomorrow. Or it's a, well, it's a broke day, I could use that. But if it would be this, this down here. Let's go down, let's go down, let's go down to my, going in. All right, well, I made this little drawer. So, and in here, it's my fist tool, Domino. Don't look like much, but it's like, I think there was like a, uh, oh, a biscuit joiner. That's had, well, a good dose of steroids, I'd say. Anabolics. Yeah. And it, it's, um, basically, it creates overholes. Deep overholes. And this is the sort of thing you put in that. Yeah. So it's um it's jointing for jointing. 
I, I use, as you can probably tell my state of it now, I use it so, so much because the joints are so flipping strong for a start. So quick to do, put together, brilliant thing, but expensive. I hummed and I hard. I blew the house down. No, I didn't. No. But I did hum and ha. And quite frankly, it broke the bank a little bit at the time. But I had a job that just came in and made sense to buy it. So I did. And crikey, aren't I glad. It's one of them machines. You when you buy something, you oh, I don't know. Would I actually ever use that? But blimey, I did. And I do. All the time. That thing. So, yeah, I, I, I would most definitely buy one again. Brilliant, brilliant bit of kit. Really is. Yeah, that's right. Just me to videos. Just me and videos. Yeah, if you can make life easier. And also to... Um, sometimes you can actually just do a better job. So if you go over and maintain the quality, like you say, or sometimes it improves it. Dust and powder are definitely potentially explosive. Ooh. Due to the easy access to oxygen. Yes, that's very true, I suppose, isn't it? I do have some device. I don't know if we've got it in here at the moment. I think it's in my work office. I've got a, um, a meter that, re uh, uh, that, that registers. I'll have to show you actually that one day. Um, particles. Actually, there's a video on here about it. And it's a particle meter. It's a, it's, it's, look, how many parts per whatever. I can't remember what it is now, but. Um, the dust anyway, the dust that's in the air, but also things like formaldehyde, carbon dioxide, and all those sort of things, and the gases as well. And the reason why I was interested in that is this. This stuff is cascomite, and it's a powdered resin wood glue, which happens to be waterproof. And it's, you know, I was introduced to that years and years and years ago, because I used to work with my old man, he's a boat builder, or was in his life, and um, he used that, well, that as his preferred glue at the time. That and another one called Aerolite. So it's just a um, brilliant bit of stuff. But it's a uh, formaldehyde. Urea formaldehyde glue. And the problem with that is it's carcinogenic. Hmm, okay. And the worry is the formaldehyde is actually the gas. And it's the gas that is, you've got to be careful of. And... Um, I was curious to know what, how much was in, coming in the air, what I was mixing and stuff like that. So, needs to say, I'm, I take more precaution with that stuff now. I use my dust masks and stuff like that, which happens to be in my office for some reason. It's not in here. I know it's in the office because I saw it earlier. Yeah. Can't think of life for me why that would be, but it is. So, yeah, it's just, um, it makes you aware. You don't realise the stuff that you're breathing in all the time. Now, there's all sorts of videos on, the, on this channel as well, but air filters we use in the house. As a woodwork, I tend to have my car, car come into the house, the workshop's obviously attached to the house, covered in flipping dust. Mrs. Screaming at me. <laughs> Understandably so. So the house gets got dust in it, and plus we've got dogs. So I thought to myself, well, after we had this meeting, I thought, crikey. And I was sitting down one day in the, in the, in the living room, it's early morning, so light was streaming through the window, like beams of light from the sun coming through the living room window. And you could just see all the dust particles. You've probably done it, seen it yourself. Dust particles in the air. And I thought, what is that dust? And you think to yourself, okay, it's going to be dog dander. It's going to be our dander. It's going to be scratchy ass juice dander. It's going to be all sorts of dander. And particles like insect poo. Like husks and anything, wood dust, you name it, it's going to be all sorts of stuff in it. Anything that's dried and turned into dust and been ground down by our feet is going to be floating around the house. I thought, that's not very pleasant. So I thought we could cut that down a bit. So what we did is we got some filters, air filters, carbon air filters, quite big ones. Got one in the um, living room, uh, which is on the auto. It's quite interesting actually because what happens whenever you sweep up anywhere, anywhere in the house or the ground floor, all of a sudden it goes into orange then red and the fans all start up and speeds up and starts sucking all the dust and goes into the filters. And it works really, really well. And it, it's got rid of the, the doggy smell, because I've got three dogs, you can imagine it, you know. We have got hard floors, we've got those soft furnishings apart from the sofas. Um, but you, obviously, obviously, otherwise the house would stink of our dogs, three dogs, because we've got, no, we've got no control over them. <laughs> they rule us. Oh, Wally, Sebastian and Pandora. Soppy things they are too. But I love them. So there you go. So anyway, I've got the filters in the, um, the house. I've got one in my, my, my um, office with a, with a carbon um, 
three-stage filter. That's great, because what it's done is, as you probably know, I like my vinyl. I don't get dust all over my vinyl anymore. I don't, well, you get a little bit, but nowhere near the amount I used to get. So it just cuts it down. I feel a bit safer as well. You're inhaling all this stuff, aren't you? All got in your lungs. Have I grossed you out now? That you might be inhaling insect poo? Maybe. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, blimey. me. Oh, I see. Did he, did he. Parts per billion million. I don't. I can't remember that. It was something like that. It's um. There was two, and there's part. I think like three, three or ten or something on this particular meter. It doesn't work. It works really well. I'm quite impressed with it. Even if it isn't that accurate, it gives you an indication of when it rises and when, it, when it's high and when it's low. So that's quite good. So yeah, it's just um. You have to try and control it somehow. And like, for instance, when I'm working in here, the amount of dust that I can produce sometimes, especially if I'm using tools with very good dust extraction, because I quite often use angle grinders with sanding discs attached because I can rip off so much material at a time. And in general, obviously, you might be wearing a dust mask, but you, you get clouds of stuff in the air. And I do have a couple of filters in there. I've got this one here, which I've wrapped another bit of filter material around it. Operates from this handle here. Hence, it says air filter. So I'll turn that on there. So it spins a bit first. There's enough big filter inside there as well, but it makes it easy to have this little pre-filter on the outside. I can easy hoover that, and it don't seem to get through to the other filter. That works well. This is a cooker hood filter, is all that is. And then we've got this other one over here, it's an axe spinster one over here, which is a, you know, it's got a finer filter, and it's got like long tube filters in that one. Oh, my hand up there. It's got like long, 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 long sort of tube filters. And that, that works really well. Just turn that off. And then obviously lighting, you've got to have lots of light. And if you can probably see, there's lights, 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 lights. Anyway, they're all LEDs, every, even the strip lights are LED. And then I've got strategically placed mirrors. <laughs> so that does actually work, believe it or not. More lights. And then I've got the, the big LED above my bench. And then when I'm doing like videos, I have this while I cart about with me as well, which is okay. But the problem is with these sort of lights, they're not, they're not video lights. And the frequency of them is not too good. So if I put this near here, that might start scanning. There you go. See that? Now that's what happens when you don't have the right lights. Photographic lights don't do that. Because the frequencies are correct. So not this one. Like, that's quite funny, isn't it? There you go. Look at the epileptic fit. Sorry. <laughs> so, yeah. And tool-wise, hand tool-wise. Let's just quickly go for what we've got in the hand tools. And I'll uh, love you and leave you. But anyway. Hand tool-wise, I do like my hand tools. But you're probably already aware of that. Since all the handles are chisel. Down Ginger Island. That was a very magic chisel. I left it down there. Apparently it's been donated to Ishmael, so that'd be buggered. <laughs> Ishmael's a great guy, but he doesn't really know. They, do, they don't value stuff. Anyway, um, you think they would actually, because he ain't got nothing, poor bloke. Got nothing, poor Ishmael. He's a lovely, lovely chap. But yeah, anyway, um, oh, these are the three what main ones I use nearly all the time. Oh, you can't see. Get down. Here you are. These ones. So we've got a tennis saw. I've always known a back saw. Uh, we've got another tennis saw at the back here as well, a finer one. And then we've got this one here, which is a dovetail saw. That's 22 points, 22 teeth per inch. And I sharpen them. My eyes go cross sided, eh? And the other saw that I use a lot, because I don't like. I'll tell you what, the, the throwaway saws, you know, like the, the hard point saws, like the one with the plastic handle at the back there. Like that one, or like that one, like here. Yeah, they're, they're great on site and stuff like that because you can't look after your tools that easy on site. Other people nick them and start cutting through bits of barbed wire and shit. Yeah, I hate work on site for that reason. Not that it's barbed wire, but stuff. People nick your gear. Anyway, things like this, this is a, this is a very old Diston panel saw. Uses a hell of a lot. Well, I, I had to refurbish it so I could use it, and obviously I sharpened it as well. But really good saw. Really good. Nice bit of steel, nice and stiff. And what we've got over here? Well, I've got another fret saw there that used to be the old fret saw until I got the other one, which I restored. Why is it so stiff? I need to wax open up. More tools in there, got a fine multi tool. It's the, the fine multi tools that, um, you might have seen it. it's got a long body and it's got an oscillating blade. It works on the same principles as the saws they use to um, cut the plaster off your leg. Um, angle, big angle grinder, a nine inch. Um, bits of it joined, but anyway, I have stuff there. Oh, I think there's too much stuff in there, it's too heavy. 
and then stuff to do with the table saw, but bob and sanding, which I use my, um, I've got a spindle moulder, I'll show you. It used to be in this workshop, but since I got the uh, pedestal, I don't use it so much doing rebates and stuff, um, or doing jointing, and they always using the, the pedestal. Yeah, that, that thing looks like an uh, overgrown thing I showed you in the box. So it's a spindle moulder. Whenever I use that, I generally use that for bobbin sanding. Like I say, everything's been dumped in there because I haven't been in it for God and Ben at months, for at least two months. Nothing's been used. So I've been trying to go through everything at the moment in this workshop anyway. I'm trying to get ready because I'm going to start doing lots more videos, woodworking type videos, but making videos in general. So it's going to be a bit of everything. It's not just going to be making stuff at wood, it's going to be making stuff at metal. Plastics, you name it. I'm gonna give it a go at everything. I might even get the missus to try and teach me how to knit. <laughs> well, that'll be a laugh. <laughs> oh god, I suppose we're doing that. But yeah, it might be, it might be a laugh. But you're just a bit of everything, and also a bit of cooking as well. Actually, I've got to do a bit of um. Like for instance, we've got a bread oven here, which is fruit there outside, a proper old stone bread oven, and we use it to make pizzas. So I might well go make some pizzas and stuff like that. But we talk about other stuff as well. You just got to stay and watch peach to cook, it'll be silly. But we do have stuff while we're doing that. But um, I think it's a bit dark outside. But what I can do is, I've got my outside workshop as well. <gasps> You've got an outside workshop? That's what frustration that is. Usually when I come indoors after having an argument with the missus, that's already. Me and the missus don't actually argue. <laughs> so, uh, dee -dee -dee -dee. where are we? It's dark, I've got to fall over something. I've got to find the light switch. This is my outside workshop, which you can't see because it's dark. We do have, wait for it. Oh, ta -da. So normally that bench there is in the middle. Uh, I've got a voice on the other side of that bench. So I'm going to be doing set videos here as well. Making stuff and doing stuff, fixing stuff. It's going to be better than everything. Now, generally before when I was doing this channel, it was nearly all about woodworking, but I want to do a bit of everything. It kind of opens the channel up to more possibilities, doesn't it? And a bit of fun. Have a laugh, haven't you? You know what I'm like, I'm a bit of a prat. I can't help it. It's not genetic, no. Well, the bedad of a brat, but in other ways. <laughs> so like this here, we want to restore this. That's another project we're going to do. We managed to get it working. It actually works though, so the cut has actually turned around because um, it was all jammed up. But we'll, we'll strip this down, get it all working. and we're going to tow that behind the uh, quad because we've got a quad and we've got a quad bike, you know. Um, and we'll have a go at cutting the grass. <laughs> In the sun. It's no good this time of year because it's only a cylinder car. And this is actually British. And I'm in France. This is the Ransoms from Ipswich. So, um, yeah, there should be three of them. This is one of the outrigger ones. One's on the outside. So there'll be a central one. And another one on the outside as well. So I don't know what sort of cut that would have been. I suppose about maybe eight feet or something. Eight feet cut, you know, cut. And they're driven by these wheels for the gears and what have you in here. It's all oil filled in that. It's quite interesting because it's got all the bushes and seals all leather. <laughs> so it's pretty old. But these things are a beast. I've used them before and they're really, really good. So I, one came up, so I thought I'd buy it. See if we can do something with it. If not, well, I bought a lemon, didn't I? Or a white elephant. Another thing I want to do, I'm going to be making signs and stuff, such as Wally Boy. Done it all freehand, that one. And this one here, which I did do freehand, it's, this one's like this one, the buy me a coffee one, that was done using, um, I literally used a bit of paper and stuck a bit of paper top, which I printed out on the computer. But that one I did freehand. It's quite deep as well, if you say, look, it cuts quite deep in that. So, cut, anything you mean? God, it bugs your hands up, I'll tell you. You have to do it in stages. Quite a lot of force you have to, you know, obviously the cutters have got to do the job. The router's got to be able to um, work in a way so it's not been forced. But still, the constant gripping of that machine. It bugs your hands up. Oh, might be because I've got a carpal tunnel. Now, this thing behind me, you have a lawnmower like that, Ginger. Well, like, like a push one. Yeah, they're really quite good, actually. Yeah, very lovely finish. I should think that's from the 50s, that one. Yeah, it's probably from the 50s, maybe 60s, but they, they were quite common. Um, especially with the steel studded wheels like that, they would make them for years down in the um, down at Ipswich. Uh, we, I used to have one years and years and years ago with the, with the three the three cutters, and that was the ransoms. Um, 
I bought that from used, used, but from Bartram Mowers. Bartram Mowers. Yeah, Bartram Mowers in Norwich. It's been such a long while I've been that down there. I haven't actually, I can't, half the time I can't remember where half these places are. My head's full of other stuff. I got what stuff that's in France. Hello, context, how you diddling? Who we got? Let's see who we've got anyway. We've got Ginger Giraffe. Oh, cool. Was that a powered one, Ginger Giraffe, or was that a push push one? It's a fantastic finish, though. Because it's, it's, it's basically a scissor cut, because you've got your bottom, you've got your cylinder that rotates, then you've got a blade, and it's actually been like a scissor cut, so it's rubbing against the bottom blade. So, really cool. You just thought it hit stone with them, then you'll know it. Free grind. Can't anyone what grade sandpaper should I use to sand filler in a wall? It really depends on the, on the filler. And really, you're thinking about um, doing it in stages to speed things up. I, I'd probably start with a, depends what sort of filler it is. Ideally, you want to get yourself a open, a bit like a net paper. It's got like a open, so I might have some hair, give you an idea. In this drawer down here. Oh, not that one. Oh, this one. Oh my giddy, more meds. Ah, this is what I'm talking about. You see the stuff here? Look at, yeah, the whole point about it is the dust falls through it so it doesn't clog. So if you can find one like that and wrap it around a block, don't do it by hand because what you'll do is you'll create a concave in your filler. You don't want a concave in your filler now, it'll be all caved. So that's the best type of stuff to use. About 120 grit would probably do you. What you'll find is when you first start using it, especially with fillet on a wall, because you're talking about dealing with aggregates effectively, or lime, you'll take the cut off quite quickly. But that's not a problem. What it does, you'll just be a finer, a finer paper effectively. So you'll work down the grits that way. But 120, you won't go any more than 120, but try and find yourself a mesh type paper like this. And they do do it four plus. They're quite often used for, um, if you know what dry lining is, it's when you plasterboard a wall and you're not using plaster, and you put tape, a tape, run a tape down the joint, and then you fill it with a filler knife. And that's how you, then you use a paper or a mesh like that, sanding mesh like that one, to sand the walls. Works very, very well. Um, anyway, that's what I would recommend anyway. I don't know if that any help. If it was me, that's what I would do. Oh, it's just like one of the shows, it was like a little craggy. Take all the uh, gingers, I reckon it must have been had three cuts together, maybe then. So, generally, they come in threes, not usually singular. That's singular because obviously I don't know what's happened to the other two. Da -da -da -da. The experts spoken, okay. <laughs> I've just been in the game for so long. You know, basically, 1989, I went self employed. Um, and that was the year when they brought out family credit. I met Caroline at that year, um, the year before, and we literally, um, well, we had done some money. So I started doing a bit of jobbing work in boats, uh, out in the boat. And at the time we, we were, well, Caroline was um, unemployed. She had four kids, you see, as well. So husband, yeah, he bugged off. So was, she was on her own with four young children. And... Um, I turn up and uh, just on the wheel, he's knocking on the door. Hello, who are you? Not quite like that, no. Long story. Anyway, <laughs> and um, I just literally, I, I had to earn some money. So I had to earn some money. So I did a bit of job and work. And the family credit at the time was very useful because it still allowed us to claim something back. Then you get a little bit extra, don't you? Top your money up. And it allowed me to build a business up. And eventually we got off, off the credits. So um, that was good. But before that, I was literally, ever since I could walk, effectively, I was, I was going to work with my dad, doing stuff. Um, I did woodwork at school, obviously. I say obviously, but I did woodwork at school. Went to college, doing woodwork. I trained as an electrician. I also um, worked in a place called, Co everyone knows Norwich. It's probably still there, but it was called Coes of Norwich Photographers. Andrew Coe used to work for, complete arsehole. He's not a very nice man. <laughs> anyway, I used to work for him, and uh, as a proper, proper, proper photographic studio, and I used to work in the laboratories, so basically um, printing and looking after machines and stuff, 
so I was there for a few years while I was doing other stuff. And um, from that, I then went pretty much full on self employed and found I couldn't work for people. So I just, uh, bit by bit, I built my business up. Started employing people, doing okay. Uh, again, come up to 2008 and that recession hit. Yeah, I had other recessions I had to deal with, but this that was particularly hard because I was working, did most of my work for our council. And the councils were tightening their belts, and then they started being funny regarding payments, which they never were before. They were absolutely brilliant payers. And then they started holding back, always getting deferred to the next month, next month. They were getting paid, all of this buggy cash flow up. And then I got in a situation where I had to constantly be dipping into credit cards and getting extending credit cards to about 36 grand in debt. And yeah, 13 guys work for us, but it builds up, I tell you, because you've got your costs, plus you've got equipment that you have on, on HP. You know, uh, vans and trucks and stuff. And anyway, we built up in sub and we were doing really, really well until that happened. And then I thought, well, that's it, I've had enough now. And we were talking about coming over to France anyway, France or Spain. And then we eventually found this place complete and utter wreck. And it's still got a lot of work that he's doing. And uh, well, I don't regret it. I just, for me, I like my bubble. This is a bit of a bubble for me. It's just like um, round the sticks. You walk down the, down the road, you might see the occasional tractor, a rear car. Um, you're more, more likely to see you know, a hawk or something sitting on top of a fence post or deers jumping across the road, you know, clearing the fences and just doing scarping and my dog's trying to chase them. That's the sort of thing that happens here. And I just like it. It's that peace, you know. It just gives the mind and soul. And it's, um, it's lovely. It's, it's lovely. I do love living here. It's hard. It's not, I'm not going to say it's easy because it's hard. Hard work. I do wonder what we do when we get more decrepit. I'm always rather decrepit as it is. I have a fair share of problems, such as cattle tunnel. You know. um, but anyway, that's enough of that. So, have I covered all my machines I've got in this space? I think I have. So, we've got the, we've got the air compressor. That is over there. Which, there we go. Ooh, Ooh have fun with that. Which runs through to the compressor next door, and that runs a couple of other bits and pieces as well, such as an air drill. <coughs> <laughs> oh my god, right there, microphone, sorry. <laughs> um, another thing that I quite like, things that I obviously find I make life a lot easier, stuff like silly things. It's just daft stuff like, oh, see, daft. So flipping useful. Just like a hold down, like that record hold down. You put it in a hole, you put it on top of your workpiece, and then you just tighten that up. That's great, you just sort of hold something down to the bench and you can work on it, you can chop it about your chisel and hammer. And it's just little things like that make life easier. Now, do you recognise these? Oh, I wonder where they come from. Oh, they're not Tesco's, are they, by any chance? <laughs> yes, they are. And that was silly things I do. I don't know why I did this, because I, 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 mean, I forgot it was there until I just looked at it just now. It's this. It's my little seat. <laughs> I'm working at the, at the voice so I can sit on it. <laughs> it goes, what is that? Let's see. Is that nutty or what? I can see I haven't really used it. It hasn't been that useful, has it? <laughs> um, I've got a variety of different chisels. Jerry and I use old bevel edge, you know, um, impact handles of them on site. This one here is similar to what I had. I left it at Ginger Island. Stanley 5002s, um, but on the whole, I prefer my old box with chisels. The steel, they don't, the edge don't last as long, but Christ, crikey, you get one hell of an edge on them. And then we've got these spoke shaves, or ghostly shaves, whatever you like to call them, what you prefer. Now this is a corner chisel, yeah, for, well, if you're doing routing hinges, say you've got a router hinge into the edge of a door, and you've got the the round, you want to get rid of that round so you can use a square edge hinge. You basically push it into the corner and you tap that with a hammer and it takes, it takes the extra bit out. Um, to, for me, I think it's a bit of a gimmick. I don't really use it. I tend to... If, if you dab hand with a chisel, you just it takes seconds with a chisel anyway. Um, various other spoke shapes, different sizes, marking gauges, draw hooks. Sharpening, really important. But I've got, I've got a series of three sharpening stones and then a water stone there. I've got my diamond sharpeners there. And I've got a whole load more sharpeners there. 
<laughs> and various jigs and stuff like that for sharpening, um, saws and what have you. You can use things like this to help you if you've got, you know, if you want to sharpen a chisel. This is a sharpening guide for a um, chisel or a plain iron that allows you to get a certain angle onto your um, stones. So, yeah, to make life a little bit easier again. I don't really use it to be honest. I prefer my set setup over here with these carriages, which literally just run over the top of the stones. You put your blade in there, or you're playing iron in here. So, one of these goes in there, and then you just run through the stones one, two, and three. And every time it's successful, pretty much. Now, in here, I don't know if I've shown you guys this before, but these are my planes. Don't get me wrong, I'm not a plain tart, a, a plain tart. <laughs> I might be a plain tart. And you're on Fridays. Oh, you have to wait for that one. Anyway, so I've got over here, this is my number seven, and that's what we call a jointer plane. This, because it's nice and long, you can create a really long flat edge. So I do all the doing jointing, hence a jointing plane. And this one here. Yeah, that just gets out of the way. It's my number six. My four plane, and also we use the joint as well, so it's a little bit shorter, and get shorter again. And these two here, the five and um, this number four here, which is the most common plane you might see, this is a number four um, smoothing plane. Um, they're very, very popular. Very useful little plane, but the people use them for the wrong, wrong purpose. I've seen too many people try to use one of those to edge a door with, or, so, or joint two boards with one of, a short plane, it doesn't work. Because also it just falls whatever curve you got, and this is really skilled. Now the plane that Graham was using was very one similar to this one here, but a Chinese E one. This is a the proper Stanley Bailey, old Stanley Bailey, not new Stanley Bailey. If you are to buy any new um, planes, I don't necessarily recommend going for a Stanley. No, the Sweetheart range is okay, but the um, bog standard Stanleys are terrible. They're Chinese, and they're not. They're, they're not you know. <laughs> no, they're not made in the UK or whatever. They're just they're not very good. What you find is you get them in the they actually they're not flat long, you know, they won't be true. The cut thing like the I don't know why, I don't see how they can't machine a bit of iron so it's flat. I, I just really don't understand that at all. It seems daft to me. So anyway, that's a series of planes. This one up top here, it's not great to be a plane, it's quite an old plane. But I've up I say upgraded, I've changed its use. Now if I'm doing a lot of um jointing work and I want to level boards up so I've glued boards together like a tabletop and I want to level them all up I'll use that that's what I call a scrubbing plane and the only difference between this plane really and say that one is it's a wider plane for a start it's a two and a half inch wide but the blade or the plane iron oh shit I'm not going to the microphone sorry is curved it's like a scoop so that takes a lot of material off in one go so it's great for leveling up and it gives you a bit of a sculpted Sort of um, finish. Sometimes the finish itself is actually really nice in its own right. Uh, other planes I've got here. Variety of little block planes. We've got a little bull, um, bull nose plane here, rebate plane, another rebate plane, and another rebate plane. All different ones, different for, for different purposes. But this plane here, oh, let me show you. This one here is actually quite special. It's a compass plane. Now let me show you. It is a really cool bit of kit. Let me just put you on here so I can, I'll need both hands for this. And I'll be demonstrating all this stuff in my videos. There's videos on the channel already, which I've already demonstrated a lot of this stuff. But I'm going to be taking a different approach to the channel. Oh, try and get these. Light is a bit of a problem, isn't it? I thought you need like a lens hood or a phone. I wonder if I do one. So I can cut that. I mean, if I, if I demonstrate what I mean. So if I'm using this bit of paper here, this is just a um, OnePlus 6 phone. The camera is there, and then you see that glare come from the side, affecting the lens. If I get this, I've got a degree in photography. Steve knows this. <laughs> so if I put this down here, like so, it knocks. It takes that haze. If you see it's a bit hazy on the side, see that how it changes. Makes a huge difference. So you can do it like a lens hood. Because obviously all these lights are shining diagonally at the lens. But anyway, let me get back to this plane. This. Is what you call a compass plane. Now, I've been wanting to get one of these for years and years and years and years, and this used to be my father's. Being he's a boat builder, he used to have to deal a lot with curved bits of wood, such as the gunnels around the boat, or the hog, 
in the boat, which is the first bit of timber, like the keel, a bit above the keel, called the hog. This, well, it's got a bendy soul, a bit like me. I'm a bit bendy everywhere, actually. <laughs> or squidgy. Do you see what's happened to that? Look, I'm, I'm putting a concave into it, so you can then plane a convex. How useful is that? It bends quite a way, you can, you know, that will go quite a long way. So if I want to make a wagon wheel, <laughs> stuff like that would be quite good for that. But also it goes the other way. And it's, this is a record one, this is actually it's a really lovely bit of kit. It's one of the better ones you can get. That's hard to buy some of these now. There's a brand called Cunts. <laughs> yeah, literally. Yeah, not Laura, no. Anyway, not Laura Cunts, but uh, <clears throat> anyway. Um, I wasn't going to do politics. No, no politics. But this one's a record. And it is a good big kit, it is. So you go that way as well. But also, whenever I put it away, I always make sure, sure it's relaxed. So it's relatively straight, there's no tension on it. Plane iron it again. So it's just literally so you can plane either that way or like that way. Great bit of kit, but they're hard to come by now. Um, one's in good working order. You might be able to get one that needs a bit of renovation. And the thing to watch out for is this thing called the dovetail here. It needs to be able to slide both in both directions. So as the tension goes on here, it can move freely either way if there's any Instead of putting tension on the two ends of the actual sole. But this was fine because I've refurbished it. It was a bit, um, not corroded, but a bit stiff because it hadn't been used for years. My dad had cancer and that. And although he was building a boat in his driveway in the suburbs of Norwich, 35 foot long boat. <sighs> Built the hull, everything. Hull, superstructure, all in his driveway. He built his workshop so he could build the boat. But this boat was being built outside. You can imagine it. It was all plywood, all sheathed in fiberglass, and then all sanded and painted. He's done a fantastic job because he's done it all. That's what he's done. But then, on a flipping stick, like, <laughs> like Charlie Chaplin. <laughs> and then he was clambering all over his boat, building his freaking boat, and then he got ill. And that was it then. It's a, I had to get a crane in to get rid of it. Originally, I was going to bring it back here and finish the boat. It just wasn't possible. The cost of getting a hair on the low load was, it was just too much money, plus the cost of, not the cost, just the time. I just thought, I just didn't have the time to do it. And I knew what was going to happen, and it'll end up just deteriorating. And then what sort of um, legacy is that for me, my dad? So I found somebody who is a boat builder in, oh, where was it? Uh, eh. Ah! Holt, in Holt in Norfolk. And um, I think this guy's name was Steve. I need to contact see if he's finished it. That'd be interesting. I think, I think about four years ago, he won't have finished it yet. I doubt it. Be interesting to see how he's getting on with it though. Hope it's all right. But anyway, it's a big boat. Big boat in the driveway. Um, but that's what you see, he's a boat builder. That's what he's done all his life. Mainly broad, Broad's boat, but he's worked Broad's boats, but he was working on all sorts of stuff in the past. I can remember being, being helping my dad at the top. And he was, um, oh, I can't remember the name of the Sultan, but he, he did, a job for, or built a boat for Sultan of Oman. And this particular boat was going on Davids. Davids, which is the, you know, the big hooks on the back of a boat that you hang another boat off. Usually a dinghy, but no. This was a 42 foot motor cruiser. Been hung on these Davids on the back of this boat. I imagine it'd be Davids, would be swung down, so they'd probably come onto the deck of the, of the main boat, which would be a ship effectively. You know, floating gym palace. Blimey. Anyway, it had, had gold-plated screws even in the hinges of the doors. All the taps, gold, it was just ridiculous. Shag pile carpets. Oh, they were gross. I think about it now. Very fashionable at the time, a long time ago. That had been in the early 80s. Oh, God, God, I've been, I probably was about 11 or 12 at the time. But yeah, I was fascinated by it. Absolutely fascinated as, as a young shabby. You kind of think, oh, the... the the, the level, they had special screwdrivers for these hinges. <laughs> Crazy. You'd be so careful not to scratch anything that's just, um, you know, gold, gold plate is soft, isn't it? So it's not great. Not the best ideas, not on a boat. Get all tarnished. All that damp and humidity. You haven't eaten anything! Oh my giddy aunt! That's what I ought to do, not eat. I lost a little bit of weight then, ginger ale. I haven't checked recently. I won't be surprised I'm putting it back on again. I haven't been crazy. Oh, Steve. 
Oh. Are you talking about me, Constance? No. Oh, that was very kind if you are. Oh, cheers, Constance. Oh my God, I've been missing, missing him. Context. Oh, Constance, okay. Never there was such stuff as sand. Didn't you know there was, oh, there is sanding mesh, ideal for plaster work. Really, really useful. I'm going to do videos on sort of stuff. There's other things I want to do videos about on this channel. I know I'm running on again, but you know me, I'm always running on. I was only supposed to be about half hour long. <laughs> I've got 12 people watching. I, I, I just find it amazing. The channel hasn't actually, um, well, hasn't been about for a good long while. So, uh, yeah, because I was obviously with all shorts, I was really, really busy doing that. And um, I kind of took over my life somewhat, to be honest. And to be honest, this is where my love is, really, anyway. So, But videos like that regarding using the mesh doing plaster work and all that sort of stuff. But also videos like um, fixing stuff into stone walls that are soft. Let's say if you've got a wall and you, you can't put a fix into it because like, like this place is all clay lump with big stones everywhere and loads of clay in between. If, if, you, if you go through the plaster and you end up in the, to, into the clay, well, you're never gonna get, ooh, spooky. <laughs> and, um, but there's other things you use, like, like chemical fix. It comes in a big like mastic tube and you squeeze it into the hole and it goes off. But before it goes off, you stick a bolt in it. So then you can tie, you know, you can then clamp things to it, might have your, you know, fix things on walls that need, that are heavy. So there's lots of things you can do. Like, for instance, if you've got plaster, you want to fix your television on the wall, right? And all your walls have been dried on, it's so all plaster boarded, but there's no fixings. It's all dobbed and dabbed, so it's been like big blobs of glue been stuck behind the plaster board. But behind that, you've got a stone wall. And you think, how the hell am I going to fix this? Oh, my TV weighs a bomb. Well, with a chemical fix, you can put studs into the stone wall and poke them through the plaster board, and then they can actually bolt a piece of timber or whatever you want to put onto it if you can mount your television onto. Yeah, it gives you something to fix the television bracket onto instead of trying on the plaster board. Now, talking about this, my daughter had this situation. She had some so called DIY chap come and um, <laughs> fix some shelves up and also put a TV on the wall. One side of it went like that. You didn't find any sound fixings. In the, yeah, in the wall, in the in this case, it's studded wall. So you could have found the studs and screwed them to them. That's something, how to find the studs. How do you, other ways of actually fixing them to a bit of plasterboard. There's all sorts of ways you can do it. One way you can, you can actually put a piece of wood behind the plasterboard. How do you do that? Well, there's ways of doing it. Oh, well, that's a video. So there's lots of little things like that. But that's obviously what I do, like I was saying before. Uh, anything to do with making or creating. So it could be stuff in the garden, it could be stuff in the greenhouse. Be stuff making things for the garden or greenhouse. Could be electrics. You know, could be anything. Just to make it interesting. I hope so, anyway. Be more mad kind of way, anyway. I'll enjoy it. As long as I enjoy it, that's all that matters. <laughs> nah. I want to be useful, that's the thing. And you feel good about yourself as well, don't you? Give something back. <laughs> about anything. Oh, what me? Oh, my goodie. Sometimes I get lost for words. I don't know what to say sometimes. That's the thing about the politics. I'm, I'm not that clued up on it, so it's kind of, it's fresh in my head for a little while, then it just drifts away. And, I've, I've got, oh, and all of a sudden it comes back again. I have to be reminded. That's what I like, you know, I suppose you could do bullet points to help refresh my mind, really. But So what I'm going to do now, because it's now an hour and eight minutes, and I really need to have some kind of time limit to these videos. I do them live like this. But this is just like an intro for the, for the channel. And I'm going to be working hard on this channel as well. I'm carrying on obviously with the other one. Um, but I'm going to try and keep that down to two videos a day because uh, I just can't keep up with it. And also, it's not doing very well at the minute. There's something going on with YouTube. They, they, they keep... What I find... That the two channels are very different. This channel relies heavily on search. So, for instance, I don't know, how do you... How do you screw into a wall argument's sake? Well, if you search that, a video might come up saying, this is how you screw into a wall. So it relies on SEO, search engine optimization. Where is news related content? It's all very here and now. So you rely heavily on that initial boost right at the beginning. So you need a lot of subscribers to be able to push it along. Whereas this one obviously behind you has lots of subscribers, but also you need, you need it's more long-term. The content becomes evergreen. 
Now, if I look at the stats on all shorts, I look at my videos, they're like this. Great. Oh, that's, all, that's not too bad. And all of a sudden, it, just, it, it flatlines. Just one or two, if you're lucky, a day, if you're lucky, you know, views. I don't know what Max's or, or, or Phil's are like, but I think they get preferential treatment of a lot of their videos because they're good, to be fair to them. Very good, in fact. Better than I am, by, by, by a long shot. Um, anyway, so that I imagine they still grow a bit afterwards because Phil's especially, quite often they come up in, in other searches. So this channel, I was looking at a lot of stats today because I was very curious because I've got problems with the, with the All Shorts channel. I noticed that the actual... Um, you get that sudden little bit of a peak, but then it's more of a, a taper, but it grows, constantly grows. As the SEO becomes um, prolific on things like Google as well as YouTube. It's a bit like when you write a blog, you know, because of my woodworking um, website. I've got a lot of low blogs and stuff on there. When you first put them up, they do nothing. And then eventually, so it's like in reverse. It's, everything's in the reverse. The news type um, content is very the here and now. You, you're very reliant on that initial burst, but with this kind of content, it's, it's more long term, it's more evergreen. So it 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 could be a video could be popular for years. I've got one video on there. Of, it's been it's doing really well on this channel. Sorry, it's doing really really well, and it's um it's literally just me cutting a bit of wood with, with a saw. I did the miter, no miter, perfect miter without a miter gauge, without a jig, without anything, just by hand. As long as you've got a shiny saw, you can do it. Anyway, I'm going to go. And thank you very much for watching. And last little look at the chat and just see if anyone said anything. Do, 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 do. Oh, Duke. Minions. What's for dinner? What do you mean? Nothing? What do you mean? You can't be bothered to cook. You're my minions. Right, I'll do it myself. Where's the microwave? <laughs> yeah, comedian Duke. <laughs> That's brilliant. <laughs> That's how I feel sometimes. No, nah, cow, she's always trying to feed me. That's my problem. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, cheers, Constance. Anyway, I'm going to Duke, Constance, Patrick. Oh, my battery's getting low as well. Just me in videos. Steve. Oh, Steve. We need to have a chat about photography again, mate. Do, 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 do. Oh, cool. Oh, that's nice. Lovely to have you all. You've been in. Gingers! Do, 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 do. Just drop in context. Oh, uh, context. Bum, 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 bum. Is that Max's show tonight? I think it is. I do like Max. He's a lovely, lovely, lovely chap. He's, really, he's actually a really sweet man. Anyway, I'm going to go. And thank you for watching and that and hanging around. Listen to me babble along. And I'm going to try and make some improvements because I'm a bit, I don't like all this, like, haze I'm getting on this side here. So I'm going to maybe have the phone in some sort of box. Shade it from the light. Oh. Hey, cool save. Yeah, we'll have to do that on Discord or whatever we did last time. I can't remember what we did. It was Discord, wasn't it? But that's quite cool. All right, mate. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I've said that so many times. I keep, I, I don't know, I just, I feel compelled. Stay. I mustn't, I mustn't, I mustn't. Because I've actually got to finish my plastering. And it's quite late already. I know what I listen to, when I'm doing that, I'm going to be listening to Max. Yeah, Max Ruspear. Or Maximilian Ruspear. It's not actually his name, but there you go. I, I'd like to come clean. My name is not Wally. No. It's also, it's not All Shorts. No. It's Marcus. Actually, I've got a little story about that. When I was at Tawny, I went to a grasshopper. Um... My sister's friends came round. Apparently, this is sort of—I can't, can't remember saying it myself, but this has been repeated so many times to me. And they said, "They said, are you a boy or are you a girl?" Because I, I had long blonde hair, you see. I said, "No, I'm a Marcus." I think that's probably stuck. <laughs> Tara. <laughs> oh, got to find the button. Are you sure you want to stop stream? Not really, but I have to. Right, here we go. Hey, Patrick. Do, do, do. Remember Max and Phil? Yeah, I, I, I get that. They have been they have been around a lot longer. Um, I think Phil started that. He was a gaming channel originally, years ago. I love, I love his content, but I've never actually had a chance to speak to Phil, so I don't really know what he's like as a person. Whereas 
lot of lot, yeah, a lot of the other chappies who do yeah, you know, like the all short type channels. Um most of the people may have been lovely, you know. But I, I'm quite fond of Max actually. He's been quite kind to me. And also we did the um parlay not parlay, the um things together. Um you know, well, I was co war type thing. And uh, although I'm crap <laughs> the money went to the Good Law Project, which was a brilliant cause. Really is a brilliant cause. So I was really happy at that. So anything to do with help. Someone's got to hold them lot to account, haven't they? That they have. Um, and you got the bowler hat man. He's a nice, nice lad. You know, he can't spell bowler hat. Um, <laughs> oh, who else was there? Oh, Fact Not Fiction. He's a good guy. Oh, loads of them. Daily Bilars, eh? Oh, quite a few of them. I, can't think, I think it's age. My memory's shot, I tell you. I don't know about you. I go to the cupboard. I think, why the hell am I here? Open the doors, look in the cupboard. I can't remember why I come to the cupboard. I'm doing it all the time. Anyway, the light's gone out. That must be my cue. So, ta-ra! <laughs>